the wrath and compassion of God are shown in the exile and liberation of his people. A reading from the second book of Chronicles people were exceedingly unfaithful, following all the abominations of the nations, and they polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent persistently to them by his messengers, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they kept mocking the messengers of God till there was no remedy. And the Chaldeans burned the house of God and broke down the wall of Jerusalem and burned all its palaces with fire and destroyed all its precious vessels. The king of the Chaldeans took into exile in Babylon those who had escaped from the sword, and they became servants to him and to his sons until the establishment of the kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed its Sabbaths. All the days that it lay desolate, it kept Sabbath to fulfill seventy years. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you, of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him. Let him go up. The word of the Lord. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my palate, if I remember you not. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat and wept, remembering Sion. On the poplars that grew there, we hung up our harps. For it was there that they asked us, our captors for songs, our oppressors for joy. Sing to us, they said, one of such. How could we sing the song of the Lord on foreign soil? If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my palate, if I remember you not, if I prize not Jerusalem as the first of my joys. When we were dead, through our crosses, we were saved by grace. A reading from letter of St. Paul to the... Even when we were dead, through our crosses, made us alive together 
with Christ and raised us up with him and made us sit with him in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus for by grace you have, see, you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of God not because of works lest any man should boast for we were his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works with God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them the word of the Lord Jesus said to Nicodemus, The Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has refused, he has refused that through the light, that through the light is come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, every, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it, for fear his actions should be exposed. But the man who lives by the truth comes out into the light, so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ Jesus, the story of the relationship between God and his people, between God and us, is a story of love. And in that relationship, God is always faithful, even if we are not faithful. 
And this is what we see in today's first reading between God and the people of Judah. The people of Judah, we are told, betray their faith. They engage in abomination of the nations. And the abomination of the nations is going after other gods, worshiping other gods. It is to live a life that is not consistent with the law that God gives his people. So if, for example, God's commandment says, do not covet another man's property or wife, the people of Judah will do the opposite of that. If God's word says, do not kill, the people of Judah will kill. I am your only God. Worship no other God apart from me. The people of Judah will worship other gods. They will engage in the practices of other nations around them. And in so doing, they go so far away from God. But today we read in Second Chronicles that when the people of Judah added infidelity to infidelity, in other words, unfaithfulness to unfaithfulness, God in his love and compassion sends them uh, his messengers, the prophets, to bring them back in line. That is how much God, my dear brothers and sisters, loves us. He will never leave us because we have sinned. So Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 to 17 says, Can a mother forget his child? The child that is sucking. Even if this mother will leave her child, I, your God, will never leave you. My dear friends, God's love is constant. But we, his people, are fickle. We are unreliable in love. And so we vacillate sometimes. We are indecisive. We do not know whether to love or not to love. And so sometimes we think that God is like us. We think that God falls in and out of love as we do. And so when because of our sinfulness we feel lost, when uh, we become so dry because we have sinned so much, we think that we have gone beyond redemption. We begin to think that if we went to God in prayer, he would not listen to us. If we went to God in prayer, he would despise our prayers and condemn us. And so we know that we actually do not deserve his love. We deserve to die rather. And he knows that you and I need more of his love than we truly deserve. And that is what he offers you and me. That is why in today's gospel we read that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So no matter how much we have sinned, God is always running after us with his love. He does not want to let go of us. Even at a time when we know that we deserve his condemnation, his word in today's gospel says, God did not send his son to come and condemn the world, but he sent him so that the world might be saved through him. And St. Alphonsus, the founder of the Redemptorist, overwhelmed by God's love for you and me, says that, God loves us so much that even if you were the only person, even if I was the only person in this world, he will send his son to come and die for me, to come and die for you, even if you were the only person in this world. And then commenting on today's gospel, he says that Jesus did not really have to die to save you and me on the cross, but 
because of his love for us, because he was in love with you and me, he offers himself for you and me on the cross. My dear brothers and sisters, that is how much God loves you and me. And we are in this Lenten season, journeying with the Lord in the wilderness, in the desert. And the only thing that is accompanying us in that desert journey, in that journey in the wilderness, is his word. So as we take the steps with him in the wilderness, as we join hands with him, he is giving us that word. Hoping that you and I will listen to that word. And when we have listened to that word, the word will penetrate us and transform us and change us so that we can love him back. The question that we have to ask ourselves in this season of Lent when we are taking this journey with him is, how far have we gone from God? How far away are we? And how deep is our sinfulness? When we have asked ourselves these questions and we have come face to face with the depths of our sins and we feel that we do not deserve that love. The other word of God that we settle the matter, even though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Even though they are as red as crimson, they shall become like wool. So with these words, my dear brothers and sisters, let us take courage and return to the Lord who is always calling you and me because he loves us. Shall I now call upon the elect and their God parents to come up front? <laughs> 